Okay, can you add fractions without having to find the LCD? And the answer is a resounding yes. There is a way where you can add fractions without finding the LCD because if you look at a problem like this, um, a lot of uh, people will be like, oh, I got to find out what the LCD is because these denominators aren't the same. So now they start thinking to themselves, mm, uh, what was that? How do I do the LCD stuff? You know, when you're dealing with basic fractions, it's pretty easy. But over here, you're going to have to go through a lot of mental gymnastics to get that LCD, rewrite the fractions with the common denominator and go from there. Now, you should be able to do this. All right? I'm not trying to uh, exonerate you from your mathematical responsibilities of being able to find the LCD. This is very, very important stuff. However, if you're in a jam and you just really don't want to use that much brain power and you just want to get a direct answer without turning these things into decimals, you never want to do that, by the way, when you're adding or subtracting fractions. You never really want to turn them into decimals because you're going to get estimations, all right? But there is a very direct uh, way to uh, handle any fraction problem, whether it's addition or subtraction. I'm going to show you this in just one second. It's probably one I've made many videos on this little technique, but I've uh, found that uh, uh, especially in the last decade or two, the way they teach arithmetic is not the way uh, some of us uh, older folks, the way we learned it way back, like for myself, I went to school, elementary school, way back in the 1970s. Uh, and I even remember my first grade teacher smoking a cigarette, and she was like, yeah, these students, well, listen, we did a lot of arithmetic back there because we didn't really use calculators and everything else. It was a little bit old school. But guess what? The old school ways of doing things, I mean, it kind of drilled it into my head. Um, but as, you know, the years have gone by with more technology, a lot of students don't, you know, really um, – um, practice arithmetic as much as they they should but you need arithmetic and you definitely need to know how to find the LCD but that's not this uh, this video is going to be focused on how you could do a um, add or subtract fractions without the LCD okay and uh, this is an excellent um, technique some of you may have uh, already learned this but if you you know you might be like yeah I'm not sure what this guy's gonna do well stick around for a couple minutes I'm gonna show you exactly how to deal with these type of problems now uh, a quick little suggestion is if you want to try this prom on your own with the LCD, that's fine too. So if you're like, yeah, hey, all right, let me give this a quick whirl and see how easy this prom is, you know, that would make it that much more interesting. But we're going to get to this prom in just one second. Let me go ahead and first quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a uh, middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Now, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses uh, ranging from pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, very shortly. Very excited about that. I love teaching advanced math. But, you know, before we get to that pre-calculus stuff, you got to get this other stuff down like we're, what we're doing here. But I also have many uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you happen to be studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACER, um, ALEX exam, maybe the CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam, all those exams and many others have math on them. <laughs> if you don't do well in the math section, uh, you don't do well on the exam. So let me help you prepare. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool math program and then obviously help those of you uh, that are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you are a math student and you're truly serious about wanting to do well in math, then you got to be serious about taking great math notes. This is the daily discipline that is the secret to success in mathematics. Okay, so I've been teaching math for decades, and the one thing I can point to consistently is those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well, and the reverse is true. Because what does it take to take great math notes? Well, you got to be focused, or you got to be paying attention, and you got to be engaged. So that's kind of, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. So but if you kind of like dismiss note-taking or you're kind of like inconsistent, like some days you take good notes, some days you don't, 
uh, this isn't going to work, right? There's just too much information in mathematics, and uh, you know, you're going to end up having a tough time. So don't be like me way back in the good old 1980s where I was taking notes, but they had nothing to do with math. <laughs> so you know, got to ask yourself, are you doing your part? You know, learning is a two-way street. Your teacher's teaching, but you got to be actively receiving that information. But um, as you improve in your note-taking, I could help you out with my notes. Okay, so you can uh, check out my notes. Those will include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links, uh, links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, now, what I'm going to be talking about here, I've done multiple videos on. Uh, you can um, watch more about this technique. I call it the bow tie technique. Um, but some of you were taught fractions in this way. Some of you were not. You only know how to add fractions with the LCD. Again, you never want to take uh, individual fractions like this and turn them into decimals and then add the, this. You don't want to do that. But if you're in a jam and you're like, oh, I don't want to deal with the LCD. I just need to get an answer. Well, then you're in the right place. So let's go ahead and get to it right now. Now, um, this technique that I'm going to be talking about works with uh, both addition and subtraction of fractions. But when you subtract fractions, you got to be careful with uh, the sign of the number. Okay, so you can end up with positive and negative fractions. So let's just keep it simple with adding fractions. So let's focus our attention over here. And uh, let's take this basic problem. So we have one third plus two fifths. So can I add these fractions? Well, what do I do? I look at the denominators and I say, are they the same number? Uh, they are not the same number, meaning they do not have a common denominator. The denominators are not in common. So what I would like to do is I like to change these denominators such that they are in common. And uh, fractions can have all kinds of uh, common denominators, but I want the lowest common denominator. All right, so with the lowest common denominator, for most of you out there, it could be like, oh, yeah, 3 and 5 in your brain. You're, you're thinking of what is the smallest number that both of these numbers go into? So you're thinking to your brain, you know, you're like, you're, well, you, you do your thinking in your brain, but <laughs> your brain's telling you, isn't it 15? Yes, it is 15, okay? 15 happens to be the lowest number that both of these numbers go into. So you're, you're saying, yeah, the LCD is 15, and you would be correct. Now, I've done a ton of videos on how to find an LCD. Uh, and there's some, like a, a little bit of a technical process that you need to, uh, to, to know and learn uh, when we're dealing with larger numbers. And that's why people, you know, with these basic problems can handle the LCD, but more challenging problems, they, they don't really understand the process, the algorithm to find the LCD. That's very, very important not only for arithmetic, but in algebra as well. But let's uh, continue on here. I'm like, okay, I want to change both of these denominators into 15. All right, so how do I do that? Well, I need to multiply this by 5 to make that 15. So i got to multiply the numerator by 5, and then i got to do this over here. i got to multiply by 3, multiply by this by 3. And now, basically, what am I doing? I'm rewriting a fraction such that the denominators are the same, they're common, okay, the lowest common denominator, but my numerators I've had to adjust, but this fraction, 5 fifteenths plus 6 fifteenths, is equivalent to 2 fifths and 1 third, we just wrote it differently, okay, such that they have common denominators. We're like, okay, now I get this. So at this point, what can we do? Well, this is the way, you know, you're kind of uh, supposed to do fractions, you have you have your uh, common denominators, 15 and 15, so you could write that one denominator there, and then you can add the numerators now. Okay, so if these numbers are the same, I can just simply add them, so 5 plus 6 is 11, and we are done, okay? So you need to know how to do this, you need to know how to find the LCD, you need to know how to rewrite fractions such that uh, the respective fractions have the LCD, so I'm not telling you that you need to, like, you can, like, not learn this, okay? <laughs> you need to know how to do this. But let's suppose you're just like, you know what? I just want to go ahead and quickly do this problem without thinking too much. What's another way of adding fractions without having to think about the LCD? Well, now I'm going to show you uh, this little uh, beautiful technique. So here's the same problem, one-third plus two-fifths. Here is uh, the bow tie method if you're not familiar with it. Now... The bow tie, right? Let's, let's say we got a little person here, and they have a little bow tie. Let me do that a little better color. You know, these little crazy ties that no one uh, wears. That's kind of like why we call it the bow tie, and you'll see that here in a second. So you're going to go ahead, and you're going to multiply in this pattern, 
okay? Precisely this pattern, don't change a pattern. You're gonna start with this bottom right uh, number, okay, this denominator, you're gonna multiply that way, okay? So five times one is what? That's five. Now you're gonna go this way, three times two, you can kind of see our little bow uh, tie kind of taking place. Three times two is six. And to finish this thing up, we're going to uh, multiply across. Now, this the, the crisscross here uh, forms our numerator. So let me do this again. Yeah, i got to explain this a little bit better. Okay, so five times one, we put this as five. Okay, this is, we're constructing our numerator. Because this is addition problem, I'm going to put a little, my addition operator here. If this was subtraction, I'd have a subtraction here. So three times two, that's six. Now, that is my numerator, and to get my denominator, it's just this times this, okay? So 3 times 5 is 15, and look at that, 5 plus 6, that's 11, over 15, same answer, okay? This took me like all of, you know, uh, 5 seconds to do. This takes a little bit longer because I'm adjusting these fractions, okay? Over here, I had to find an LCD. Here, I just simply had to follow this pattern, this times this, plus this times this, over this times this, okay? This is an excellent, excellent technique. You absolutely need to know this, all right? Because this comes in handy in algebra when you're dealing with uh, fractions that um, have variables in them. So let me show you this real quick. It's a little bonus. What if I had A over B plus C over X? You're like, well, what's the LCD? Well, you can go through, that's BX. But if you know this technique, this works here with algebra as well. So this is uh, X times A, so AX plus B times C, that's BC over uh, B times X, BX. There you go, okay? So this is equal to this, and I didn't really have to think about it, and it's absolutely um, a accurate answer. All right, now let's get to this fraction up here, okay? So we have 15 and 32. I'd have to do some work. I'd have to think about how to find the LCD here, right? I have to like, you know, do some manipulation. And if you forgot, you know, how to find the LCD beyond these little easy problems, well, this is where this bow tie method could definitely help you out. Now, there is one uh, little disadvantage to this technique, but let me just go ahead and do the, uh, the problem here, and I'll talk about that disadvantage. It doesn't uh, distract from how awesome this technique is. It's just you might have to do a little bit of work, uh, extra work. All right, so we have 3 15ths plus 2... Uh, 30 seconds. I'm not going to find an LCD. I'm simply going to just do my little bow time method. So I'm going to go 32 times 3. Now I have to do some basic multiplication, but that's that's not too bad, right? I mean, I'm not trying to figure out the LCD. So 32 times 3, that's 96. 15 times 2, that's 30. Okay. So this is an addition problem. So it's, this form is my numerator. And now I just go 15 times 32. This is my denominator. That's 480. Okay, yeah, I do have to do some basic multiplication, but again, I'm not trying to figure something out. I'm just doing some, like, you know, uh, quick, you know, uh, basic multiplication and addition here. So now 96 plus 30, that's 126. Over 480, I am done. Okay, this is the correct answer. Okay, so, um, however, the one disadvantage that you can, uh, using this technique is Oftentimes, uh, because we are not finding the LCD, your answer may need to be reduced, okay? And you do uh, want to reduce your final answers. You don't want to leave your, never want to like turn in a fraction like 30 over 60 to your teacher, okay? Your, your teacher is probably going to get upset and be like, yeah, why don't you just give me one half, all right? Finish the problem. So simplification of fractions, it's not like an optional thing, okay? You need to do it or your teacher is going to get a little upset, and he might take one or two little points off. So here, you know, looking at this, you're going to be like, okay, well, you know, start thinking about how to reduce a fraction. That's, just, you know, another uh, topic. But you could be like, okay, 2 goes into 126, uh, 63. You could just kind of whittle this thing down. 480 divided by 2 is 240, and then you kind of uh, go further. This ends up being 21 over 80. But what I have found is that uh, most students do better with reducing, okay, things down uh, than finding the LCD. Finding the LCD of large numbers, is it's, it's quite a bit of uh, work. So if I had like, think about it, if I had like 2,040, 17 over 2,040 over, I don't know, 153 over 822. Imagine doing that uh, problem. 
you're like, okay, I gotta have to find the LCD. Most people's expressions might be like this. They might be like, uh, yeah, no thank you, okay? Now imagine if uh, you knew this technique, this bow tie technique, bow tie technique, I'm gonna go this times this, plus uh, this times this, that's my numerator. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing multiplication. But even if I have my calculator to help me out, I can, I'll can. i end up with a, a um, correct answer. Then I can start messing around, trying to reduce this fraction, whittle it down. But the one thing is, I won't have to figure out the LCD. So this is a great technique. Um, but, you know, as much as I'm propping up this bow tie method as an excellent technique, it still doesn't exonerate you from knowing how to find the LCD. You need to know how to find the LCD, uh, not only for arithmetic, but for algebra as well. And I have tons of videos on this in my uh, pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel. Of course, uh, I thoroughly teach this in my uh, pre-algebra and algebra courses in my math help program as well. All right, so uh, if you like this uh, little technique, uh, you like this little video to some degree, please consider smashing that like button. That uh, would definitely uh, make me happy. Now, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus uh, math videos, basic to advanced. Um, my goal is to try to teach uh, math in a clear and understandable way. That's my, always my objective. Nobody should be uh, failing in math, okay? If you're having a tough time in math, uh, make sure you're doing your part, okay? Start with taking great notes, talk to your math teacher, and then beyond that, if you need additional instruction, there's a lot of great math teachers out there. If you like my math instruction, I have tons of uh, videos on my channel, all different type of topics that can help you out. I make those videos uh, for people to watch them, okay, and benefit from them. But if you want my best math help, that will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.